Let us continue, therefore, with uh, discussing non-democratic forms of uh, political systems. We have insisted, we have talked a lot about democratic systems. <clears throat> they constitute, as I said, the model nowadays. Uh, we expect a state uh, to be organized <coughs> so that its political system is uh, democratic. You know, we talked about the requirements uh, of uh, what a state needs to deliver. We talked about the fact that it needs to deliver security, which can be, um, you know, physical security or economic security. But also, I mentioned that one of the requirements nowadays is implicitly that the political system within that state is organized on democratic principles. So we talked about different models so that you have... The point was to help you acquire the vocabulary uh, of political science. You know, what is a state? What is a po what is political system? What is government, head of executive, legislature, all these things, right? So that, that, that was the point. Uh, <clears throat> however, obviously not all states around the world, modern states, right, um, are organized along democratic principles. Um, there has been an increase in the number of countries that we can consider uh, democratic, in the sense of organized according to those principles of a liberal democracy, that I mentioned. And even, even there, there are liberal democracies, then there are illiberal democracies. Not all of them have all the components that you mentioned. And again, we're talking about political reality. A political reality is basically human society in action. So we shouldn't, you know, assume that these are some universal abstract principles that, you know, someone has uh, granted us or delivered to us and we just have to apply them, right? These are developments within human history. This is why we read uh, and learn about different ways of organizing society. This is why we talked about you know, Plato, Aristotle, Aquinas, and so on, because this is not the only way to organize society. It might not be the, the best way, right? So in each of each period in, of, in time, there are people who say, well, the way we live is the best way, right? At any time in history. Uh, <clears throat> And there are a few others who say no. Um, so, uh, long story short, let's let's talk about a few ways of um, organ models of organizing uh, politics today that are not do not correspond with the, this liberal democratic model that de developed in modernity and that we follow. Um, so first, in this uh, shorter lecture, I will <coughs> talk a little bit about um, the. Uh, the vocabulary, right? Some major concepts, uh, the way we talk about these non-democratic regimes. And then in the next lecture, I will present an example of such a non-democratic regime, namely Iran. So non-democratic regimes, what are they? Well, clearly they will not fit the description of a liberal democracy the way we described it uh, in the previous uh, lecture, right? So what were those criteria? Free and fair elections, right? Which, needs to, which need to be secret, with uh, different candidates representing different programs, uh, the free campaign, that you can learn about these programs and candidates. Um, also, they need to be efficacious, these elections, right? Uh, they need to be um, uh, organized in a transparent manner so that the results um, are actually accurate, but also the results need to be effective in the sense that, well, if a party wins, that party needs to get into power. The result of the elections needs to matter, and so on. Also, here we mentioned uh, the importance of a limited mandate, both in time and in uh, duration overall, meaning that uh, you know you don't elect them for life, uh, and you <coughs> even even if you elect them repeatedly, they can be in power forever. So, free and fair elections overall, with limited mandate, or alternation in power, right? Then we also also mentioned political and civil rights and liberties, right? Uh, the right to participate, to be a citizen active in politics, and the rights of a citizen, uh, which, which we have grown accustomed to consider to be necessary, right? Free speech, uh, right of exercising your religion, right to organize, right to, pro uh, to protest, freedom of the press, you know, all these things that kind of, you know, if you um, check the Declaration of Human Rights, International Declaration of, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that's a good, you know, platform for that. But there are other documents this is not, again, a set thing. We, there are some commonalities, especially in, among democracies, they kind of agree on a set, but not on all. And I gave you this example that 
uh, for example, in Germany, uh, uh, communist or fascist um, uh, Nazi parties are banned. Now they're not banned in the United States. You're not, you're not. Uh, it's not illegal to make propaganda for Hitler for whatever. Right? That in Germany, even denying the Holocaust in Germany, sends you to jail. Okay. So, and it, is it a democracy? Yes, it is. But they don't have freedom of speech. But here's the thing, right? Because freedom of speech, what does it mean in different contexts? Again, it's a matter of political culture. So, rights and freedoms, civil rights, uh, civil and political rights and freedoms. Then, a rule of law was the third major criteria, right? The fact that the law is uh, universal, everybody is subject to law equally, <clears throat> that there's a system, of course, that functions and applies this system of law, and so on. And finally, uh, limited and accountable government. A government that is not, doesn't intrude on all aspects of your life and that you can hold accountable to various means, especially elections, but not only. It's a, it's a, you, there is a feedback, there is an interchange between citizen and government. So, these being the major criteria, clearly the non-democratic regimes will fail to accomplish them. And we mentioned that you can have electoral democracies, you can have illiberal democracies, but the models we talk today are even further, further away, farther away. From, from the liberal democratic model. So, authoritarian regimes these are regimes uh, that where one uh, group has uh, all the political power and they can't basically be removed. That's, that's about what it is. Uh, so the political rights as you see, of the citizens are limited because you can do a certain uh, things to a degree, but you can't really become, you can't remove the people in power, right? So that's authoritarian regime. Uh, clearly, here the rights of the and freedoms of the citizens are limited, but especially the political rights and freedoms. If we want to kind of uh, give them a distinguish this one from the model we're going to talk about in a second. Authoritarian regime. In an authoritarian regime, there is a group of people in power who you can't really be removed, uh, and they don't allow for political competition. So that's the key, right? However, the other aspects of life are free. The the private, personal, economic, right aspects of life. You can do whatever you want. You can have your business. You can do this and that and that. Only if you don't participate in politics, or you don't threaten. Uh, the political power of those in power. So that's kind of what is authoritarian. Examples of authoritarian regimes, Zimbabwe, some would say Singapore, some would even say Russia today. It wasn't really until recently, but it looks very much like an authoritarian regime with Putin. Maybe it's illiberal slash authoritarian, it's maybe not, not completely so. Then the other model is um, totalitarian. You see, this is different, right? Here, right, the, 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 the rulers did not have, well, whichever group is in power, did not have <coughs> a limited mandate, right? They were in power, that's, that's it, uh, case, case closed. Here, however, that, you have everything that you had in the authoritarian regime, however, it's called totalitarian, total, right? Authoritarian, authority, totalitarian, total, why total? Because here, the group uh, in power, the, the elements in power, control all aspects of life. So this is a political system in which the power holders, the political power holder, control everything. Control every aspect of society, control every aspect of your life. So that's what it makes it totalitarian, right? So often you will see that these totalitarian regimes are based on what? Ideologies in the hard sense. Now remember our definition of ideologies in the hard sense, right? Ideologies are meta-narratives, narratives about the entire existence, uh, which claim to explain everything and claim to be, have the power to distinguish clearly the root of all evil, to remember the tension between disorder and order we talked about in, when we talked about different philosophers. Well, ideologies pretend to have the final answer, and the final answer in the harsh sense, right? Uh, once you know who is the evil, who is the bad guy, the bad guys, right? Uh, you will use, uh, you, you, you just have to eliminate them. Right? That's what ideologies do. They use the power political tools to um, accomplish really uh, moral goals, right? However, uh, based on what? On, on some, on some uh, thing they have identified 
within society or history, right? And, and a good uh, you know, example of this is communism, which identifies the root of all evil into, in, in class struggle, in, in, in property and oppression. That's, there, there always have been people who had property and people who haven't, and those who have oppressed those who have not. That's the dynamic of history. Once you remove the, 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 root, the root of all evil, which is property, uh, then you won't have this oppression, so things will kind of, kind of heal themselves. So that's, that's, you know, it's a one explanation which points to some existing problem, which you can deny, but it makes it into the explanation of the whole, of, of everything. And notice also that these ideologies are, you know, um, find, you know, they identify, or nationalism, right? They, they identify uh, problems in, uh, in this world, right, based on, you know, economic mechanisms or, you know, na nationality and so on. But with that problem, that they identified, they explain the entire universe, basically. So, I, I, uh, this is a parenthesis. The point is that many totalitarian regimes, as we'll see when we talk about China, for example, uh, are based on ideologies, right? Because an ideology gives them a program to reform and transform society. And if you don't fit into that ideology, you're going to be punished. If you don't fit into that ideology, you're going to be you're going to be expelled. Now notice here that any society, any political system is based on an idea, on a, on a, on a philosophy or a bunch of, a set of values and rules, right? If the United States the Constitution has a very clear set of values and rules. And these are not the values and rules, these are not the absolute, because other political systems, democratic, have different values and rules. Okay? Maybe similar, but not exactly the same. The point is that any political system, any regime, is a system of order. It's a philosophy in practice, right? These, however, so that's also what these are. Totalitarian regimes based on ideology. However, they're very ambitious, as I said. They tend to, <coughs> and very, um, ideologies are exclusivist, right? Ideologies <coughs> identify the cause, root of all evil, usually in, in some component of society. And then they just have to eliminate that or suppress that. So, uh, back to totalitarian regimes, what do they do? They um, control all aspects of uh, life. So, authoritarian regimes, not unlimited mandate, but uh, controls only the political aspect of life. Totalitarian regimes, no limited mandate, uh, but controls all aspects of life. Here you can have your own private business economic life, here no, every single aspect of your life needs to be controlled. So this is why often here in totalitarian regimes you will find a very powerful ideology uh, backing uh, or being the backbone of the, of the system. You will also have a very powerful leader because someone needs to be the one who sets the right direction, sets the right course, right? And you might see a, one leader who is kind of endowed with his extraordinary figure, uh, uh, extraordinary, in a way, powers of being the, the guide of the nation, the guide of the country, the, the, the genius, uh, and so on. So basically a cult of personality, a famous cult of personality. So thus, were, uh, you know, the examples are North Korea today, for example, Kim Jong-un, right, uh, who is the leader, and there's the ideology, which is a variation of communism. Uh, China, <coughs> during Mao's reign, no? Today is more in between these two. Um, um, Afghanistan went during the Taliban era, uh, when uh, and, and so on. So these are the two major models that I wanted to know, right? Uh, and let's just add two more um, and understand the differences between them. And let's just add two more um, terms: dictatorship. Um, which is basically a form of either authoritarian or totalitarian regime. So either a, uh, a regime that is either totalitarian or um, authoritarian could be a dictatorship. And it just means some of these, some of these terms overlap, okay? so don't be uh, desperate. <laughs> what, we need, what you need to distinguish is between totalitarian and authoritarian. Dictatorship is another term that I, it's, is used, so I want you to know what it means. So it's, it's basically one ruler or a set of rulers 
which have absolute political uh, power and authority without a limited mandate and control all political institutions. That's all there is, right? So it's, um, it can be either authoritarian or totalitarian. Dictatorship means that there is a group or person who dictates, who rules uh, ultimately, who cannot be removed right, from power, uh, who has all the political power, an entire political power. So you see it's an overlap of terms. But just know what a dictatorship means. Um, it doesn't have to be totalitarian, right? That's, that's important. It can be an authoritarian one, but it can also be uh, totalitarian, right? So, uh, USSR, for example, during Stalin's rule, was both a totalitarian regime, controlling all aspects of life, and also a dictatorship, right? Because it was one dictator who dictated everything, right? Autocracy uh, is another term. And again, this is an overlapping term with, uh, with the, the ones we have discussed. It simply means that there's one person one that is an absolute ruler so auto right one self right uh, one person who has all the power autocracy so you see these 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 are overlapping terms but you know and you have them also defined all of these four terms in your in your dancing textbook i also added um, a resource in um, on canvas uh, to the document uh, regarding liberal democracies um, and to the previous discussion and that's a document that's a link to a um, Freedom House um, document, a Freedom House um, report. So what is Freedom House? It's a non-profit organization uh, active around the world that basically <coughs> uh, attempts to measure the degree of freedom in different states around the world. Right? So this is why uh, they produce every year a report and categorize all the states around the world in free, partially free, or not free. So the links that I posted have a map of the world and you can see which <coughs> are considered more free and less free. Uh, and there are also some um, lists. So please study these uh, resources. Obviously what they measure is civil rights, political rights, uh, and liberties, civil and political rights and liberties, that's what they uh, measure. And it's just interesting to see, uh, to have a picture of this, and also I want you to be familiar with this and to be able to name a few free, a few partially free, and a few um, uh, not free uh, states. So, these are the major uh, terms that I wanted you to be familiar with, but now we're going to look in the next uh, lecture, <coughs> we're going to look at one case study, and then uh, in the uh, uh, upcoming lecture we will look at um, another case study. So first we will look at uh, Iran and then we will look at China as examples of non-democratic political systems.